welcome to my youtube channel mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials so in this video i am talking about the sum of the fundamentals of metal cutting process so basically in the field of metal cutting process the tool material must be harder than the workpiece materials so the selection of the tool generally on the basis of the working material of the applications so in the case of the principle of the metal cuttings so generally the relative motion you observed between the cutting tool and the workpiece materials so in the case of the cutting operations either the tool is stationary workpiece is rotating or moving or in some cases the workpiece is stationary tool is moving so always you will find out the sum of the relative motions between cutting tool and the workpiece in the cutting operations so generally tool edges come in contact with the metal it exert the pressure or you can say stress onto the metal so that stress is exceeded from the yield strength of that particular workpiece material then and then the cutting operation is carried out so basically tool edge is come in contact and the metal cutting so that kind of process it will be representing as a conventional metal cutting process so basically two types of metal cutting process conventional and non conventional so in case of the conventional metal cutting process tool is always in contact with the workpiece metal but in case of the non conventional machining process tool edge and workpiece never it will be in contact so the metal severely compressed cause a high temperature shear stress into the metal so by the contacting of the tool edge with the workpiece material and that pressure or you can say force or you can say cutting force that should be increasing the yield stress of the material so always that will be some kind of friction take place between the tool edge and the workpiece so the causes is temperature high in the materials so just you can see over here the basic geometry of the tool and the workpiece so by the application of tool force on to the cutting of the metals so as per my requirement of the parameters like of feed speed and depth of cut over here just you can see by the cutting edge it will be in contact with the workpiece material at the some depth of cut by the increasing of the cutting force so cutting force is more than the yield strength of the materials then the cutting started into the materials so during that cutting it will be developing the different zones so just you can see over here the primary shear zone so basically primary shear zone you can see that when the chip is flowing onto the tool at the certain angles so that angles generally representing as a primary shear zone so basically the shear plane it will be at the tip of the tool and the outer side of the chips so it will be making a one plane and that plane it will be making an angle with the horizontal axis that will be representing as a shear angle now the secondary zone so generally by the application of the cutting force that remove material it will be flowing onto the top face of the cutting tool so due to the flowing of that continuously chips onto the top surface of the tool during that flow characteristics of the chip it will be having a rub actions onto the top face of the tool so by the friction and continuously flowing of the chip it will be increasing the temperatures so that will be representing as a secondary zone during the metal cutting so the temperature onto the different components of the metal cutting process so basically 
by the application of the cutting force and the contact of the tool and workpiece so the maximum heat it will be through the chip so the 70 percentage heat it will be taken away by the chip and the 15 percent heat it will be carried on to the tool and more 15 percent heat it will be carried on to the workpiece so most of the cases if you are observing or cutting onto the any machines so the chip it will be heated right so these all are the basic principle of the metal cutting processes so as the tool advances the stress in the workpiece just ahead of the cutting tool reaches a value exceeding the ultimate strength of the metals as we already discussed particles of the metal start shearing away and flow plastically along the shear plane so that will be representing as a shear plane it forms segmentals of chips which moves along the face of the tool we already discussed so generally the chips flowing onto the top surface of the tool the cycle of the compression plastic flow and the searing away is repeated so that will be increasing the temperature of the chip tool and the workpiece and maximum temperature you can find onto the chip materials so in result into the form of a continuously flowing chips so now classification of the metal cutting processes so generally classification based on to the position of the cutting edge of the cutting tool so orthogonal cutting so basically the cutting edge of the tool is perpendicular to the direction of the tool travel and in case of the oblique cuttings the cutting edge of the tool is inclined to the direction of the tool travel so in case of the orthogonal that will be perpendicular and in case of oblique it will be having a some angle so now most of the machining carried out in the workshop is through the oblique cutting because it will be reduce the cutting force and increasing the life of the tool or you can also minimize the effort or optimize the cutting process so there are some more kind of benefits of the oblique cuttings over the orthogonal cuttings now we will see that the orthogonal cuttings so basically we already discussed that should be the perpendicular to the direction of the tool so here just you can see the cutting process onto the planar machines so here it will be the workpiece and tool is right angles or you can say perpendicular to the workpiece so in the case of planar machines tool is a stationary element and workpiece is moving so by the moving of the workpiece and according to the depth of cut of the tool and workpiece the chip is being formed so if the tool it will be at the right angles or you can see perpendicular to the direction of the tool travel because direction of the tool travel that will be the perpendicular to the cutting edge so here it will be the examples of the cutting process now we will see for the turning process so just you can see over here so one element or you can say rotating cylindrical workpiece onto the lathe machines and according to the depth of cut the cutting tool the positioning of the cutting edge that will be the perpendicular to the direction of the tool travel so here just you can see the 90 feet and depth of cut is given on to the turning operations now second one oblique cuttings so we already discussed the cutting edge of the tool is inclined to the direction of the tool travel so once again we discussing with the same examples of the cutting of the workpiece by the planner machines so the tool is a stationary and the workpiece is moving but your cutting edge now it will be having a some cutting inclinations so it will be not exactly perpendicular to the tool travel so in that case you can reducing the 
cutting force reducing the friction or you can say optimize the cutting process so similarly workpiece and tool that will be inclined to the direction of the tool and the formation of the chips now we were discussing for the oblique turnings the similar kind of arrangement but just you can see over here the tool it will be not directly perpendicular to the direction of the tool but that will be having a some inclination angle to the direction of the tool travel so the basic difference between orthogonal cutting and oblique cutting that should be into the examinations so just you can observe now all the four process of the orthogonal cutting orthogonal turning oblique cutting and oblique turning process so it will be need to be understand how the tool is positioning with the workpiece for the case of the cutting as well as onto the turnings so some of the difference between orthogonal and oblique cutting so in case of orthogonal turning in this cutting operations cutting edge of the tool is perpendicular to the direction of the tool travel but in case of the oblique cutting in this cutting operations cutting edge of the tool is inclined to the direction of the tool travel now in case of the orthogonal cutting only two components of the cutting force are acting onto the tool but in case of the oblique all the three components of the cutting force are acting onto the cutting edge so the for the analysis purpose of the force diagrams basically we are taking an orthogonal cutting because that will be having a only two component systems but in case of the oblique it will be the three component systems so the third difference the cutting edge is larger than the width of the cut the cutting edge of may or may not be larger than the width of the cut because that tool edge it will be having a certain angles so only the selected portion that will be in contact so the direction of the chip flow is perpendicular to the cutting edge in case of the oblique the direction of the chip flow is inclined to the cutting edge in case of the orthogonal cutting the chip coils in a tight or flat spiral but oblique cutting the chip flow sideways in a long so if there is a experienced person so just they are observing the characteristics of the chip and it will be defining that that should be carried out the orthogonal cutting or oblique cutting so the cutting force is distributed in a larger area hence the heat developed due to the friction between tool and workpiece per unit area is smaller but in case of the oblique cutting there are some limited area it will be in contact so the cutting force is distributed in a smaller area so hence it will be developing the heat per unit area is larger and the last one is produce the sharp corners but in case of the oblique cutting produces chamfer at the end of the cut that we already discuss into the previous theories so if you like it then subscribe and share mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials thank you